you want the child to have a mind of, of thinking, a mind of questioning, um, and a mind of asking. So I do not want Elliot to um, be accepting things just for the, the sake of it or be just because the educators tell him to. In an inquiry-based approach, we believe that children are capable learners. So they are able to make sense of the environment, the world around them, and they always try to do that eagerly. So what we do is we uh, create a stimulating environment for them to make that learning happen. In N1, they start introducing children to, to the alphabet. What the teacher did for Michael's class was that she made them do printing so that there was a hands-on experience. They got their hands dirty with ink and they all managed to um, print letters. I remember there was uh, once they actually came up with a storybook by themselves. So each student came up with a few lines, yeah, and it's all a creative piece of work by all the other students. Julia's class, they are actually doing a famous painters. So they, they started off with Vincent van Gogh, and they are all doing paintings that van Gogh has done. And to a parent, I think it's very impressive that a child that's only six years old um, knows all about these artists and, and his painting paintings that the artists have painted. They were actually asked to read books when they were in preschool. From that, they start the reading journey. And when they, when they get into primary school and they're being asked to read, they're not afraid to read and they can just read anything. Reading is something that needs to be enjoyable. Yeah? And reading is very important because the uh, foundation for languages is from reading. Inquiry-based approach because children are supported to learn the areas or the concepts that they are interested in, so their motivation in learning is very high. I feel that if there is an, another way to develop the brain in the early years, then this would be the approach for me.